Taiwan special, episode one for the week. Fast announcement. This is going to be quick. I know that you stick to the issues crowd folk are, are going to want me to not talk too much about my inside life. That, that's what the Podcast Weekly is about. But you need to know this. PacificDailyTimes.com has had a complete makeover. Development is done. I am looking for advertisers. If you have a, 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 a product that would work with a good affiliate marketing thing, uh, let me know. Just go to the website, click on your ad here, fill out the form. Uh, the the old PacificDailyTimes.com website has switched over to PDT.news. Now, all the old links from, you know, PacificDailyTimes.com articles, like if you read, you know, if you read the, the you read or listen to the Symphony uh, editorial blog, if you, you follow that, or if you, um, you know, the, the point articles, I, you know, the, the, my, the, the point uh, from, you know, Jesse Steele at PacificDailyTimes.com, those links all forward and redirect over to pdt.news and everything forwards and, and corrects. It's all, it's all backward compatible, but the blogs and uh, the, the articles and the links are at pdt.news. PacificDayTimes.com is now exclusively uh, a link site. I, I, you know, in a word, drudge, um, but it's, it's very, very different. It's got a, a dark theme, a light theme, scroll down to the bottom. There's kind of an about section that's next to all of the, um, the, the, the terms, conditions links. So, um, check that out. This is a big deal. I promise I'd get it done last week. It's all done and that's it. Okay. I got, I, I'm proud of myself. I got through an announcement with the stick to the issues crowd without being boring. Um, oh, I elaborated on a whole lot more and everything it took and what I think about it all in, in the, in the, the podcast weekly, uh, which is, which is the house cleaning and announcements, uh, podcast, which keeps me going. And I actually talk about why I do that. Okay. So, um, on to, uh, hold on a second. I need a drink of this. Now, I, I've been going through many sleepless nights getting stuff done. Uh, I am a productive person and, uh, mm, sometimes I'd sleep five hours, wake up, start coding. Um, Ingenious. If you want to get on pod, podcast weekly, I explain a lot of the stuff about it. I'm going to talk about um, uh, Trump, G20, Kim. Oh, yeah. Yay. Um, by Trump. Go, what, was the, what was the. They made the note here. Kim was honored. As in, like. This is a note that I've got here that I'm reading. So he was honored because Trump's visit stole away. Okay. President Trump gave Kim Jong un a great honor. See, right next door in a city called Osaka, at this big island country right next door that he's never been to. And if life goes on as usual, he never will go to Japan. In Osaka was this big meeting and his main enemy, the president of South Korea, was at that meeting. So we've got, um, uh, you know, Kim Jong-un is there in Pyongyang and all the leaders of the big world, not the free world. We've got China and Russia there. The leaders of the big world are there and he's not, he's left out. And by Trump stopping over, um, that's, that's a, that's a big deal. That's, that's a big honor. Because all these other leaders were in the limelight and the newspaper stories were about them and they're not about Kim Jong-un. And he does do things to get attention in the Western press. Of, of course, I mean, every leader wants attention in the press because um, press time, it, it's money. Like it, it, it gives you strength and clout as a leader. Leaders do need to have attention. Their people need to know who they are. Their people need to see who their leaders are. By Trump stopping by, Kim became the central focus of the G20 summit. And that, that was a big honor there. You know, I've lived in Taiwan 10 years and that's what I think about this. It's one of the things I think about now watching them at, 
at the DMZ watching Trump come out and, and, and walk down. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that was it. I've seen enough videos uh, of, of scenes at the DMZ. I had an ESL friend I met 10 years ago. Uh, he told me that he'd gone to the DMZ and he'd actually walked in a little room like you can tour the DMZ. So he'd been into the little, the little room there. there there's, a little, there's a little room that you can walk into. Uh, yeah, I've seen enough videos that I felt like I kind of knew the place. And it's like, wow, the president is there. And there comes Kim Jong-un and he's there. And, and it was a casual meeting and it was okay. And uh, they actually made stuff work. And Kim's coming down the steps to, to shake Trump's hand. And yeah, okay. Um, something you notice if you watch the, uh, the videos, of course, it was linked of course, at PacificallyTimes.com, the, the, uh, the, the, top, the top article in the Korea stack. Um, there were these, the news reporters were yelling at each other a lot. Okay, I, what's going on here? Asian press is a little less, quote unquote, respectful than Western press. And I've heard the Taiwanese talk about this. I was there with the Sunflower students in their legislature when all of the, the masses had left and it was only Lin Feifan and Chen Weiting, the two leaders who, who the two guys who organized and started stuff anyway. It was just them left. And there was this mob of press cameras all around them and they couldn't move. They, they were way on the far, they, they had been, you know, all the students had left and the, 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 the cameras had, had mobbed them and they were down at the, um, uh, at the, at the front of the floor in the legislature. And they had to slowly inch their way up the legislative floor to the back exit, uh, of, of the, of the chamber. And that took about a minute for them to migrate up there. It, sh it should have taken them 10 seconds to walk, maybe five. And it took them a long time to move because the, the Taiwanese press just swarms people without any consideration for others at all. Even the Western press has some sort of ethical consideration. There's certain things that they know that you just don't do. The, the, the press in Taiwan doesn't have that. And I can only presume that the press uh, in other Asian countries in Taiwan's backyard are going to behave similarly. And so that's what I see. Uh, you know, like, for example, Trump and, uh, Trump and Kim, excuse me, uh, just crossed the border into the Korean side. Uh, or, or they're, they're stay, I don't know whether they crossed or not, but they were, they were facing toward the, the South Korean side and the press was there taking photos. I mean, they were standing for a photo and two, uh, two camera people. I, I don't, I, off the top of my head, I want to think one of them was video. And one of them may have been some other type of a camera, but there were two, two video, video videographers who ran down in front and knelt down to get a close up shot at an upward angle. And the people from the press behind them started yelling, no, no, out, you know, no. Like they were shouting at them, like, you can't do that. That's bad. Get out of the way. And uh, that's what that was. I, I think that was the Asian press not having as many boundaries of respect. And so if you, if you look at what's happening in, in other parts of what happens after that, you see some Western girls running around. You got, you got some Western reporters in there. So... Um, anyhow, th that was my take on the press. It was, it, was, it was a big, massive press thing. A lot of people were running around and worried uh, as, as, as they, they, they all scuffled uh, across the border and then into the building. So um, that's a, a lot of the angst <laughs> was just about press culture. And the big clash was not so much between, from what I see, it wasn't so much between the South Korean and North Korean press. It was between the Westerners in the South Korean press versus the Asians in the South Korean press. That's what that clash was about. I just, that was a factor. I don't know everything. I wasn't there, but that's what I see looking through. Um, so I, I, I think that the clash among the press probably created some chaos and some of the security guys might have gotten concerned about people rushing and charging out of place. Um, so I it just, it's, it's amazing uh, the, 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 what the press can do uh, to set the tone, to set a dynamic of different things. Okay. Um, that's really one of the big things that I thought of. Oh, I, you know, I got to tell you this. How they say Kim Jong-un's name in Chinese, uh, Jin Zong un uh, So there, that's uh, Jin Zong un is, is how they, they say Kim's name in Chinese. Yeah, I, I could have an episode one time where I read everybody's name. Uh, Zhang Jieshi is uh, Shang Kai-shek's name. Uh, 
uh, Sun Yat-sun's name, uh, uh, Zhang, Zhang Zhongshan, Zhongshan, I think was Sun, uh, Dr. Sun Yat-sun, who, he was a Christian that founded the idea of the Republic of China, and then quickly it got taken over by, by corporatists as soon as he died. Uh, that's, you know, what people all would do. Anyhow, uh, okay, uh, well, that was interesting. My take on Trump going over, uh, to Korea. Well, you know, I did, the thing is, it's like, um, you know, here Kim is holed up in what we call the hermit kingdom. And he's, he's stuck and everyone's ignoring him and he's kind of the bad boy. And whatever Xi Jinping hoped to get out of going to visit him recently might have been entirely lost because that, I mean, you know, Kim kind of likes Trump. Like, you know, when you don't have friends, you're kind of eager to, ha to meet people, you know, and Trump is willing to talk to him. He doesn't just yell at him. He doesn't just push him out. And, you know, they, they say that it was a failure in Hanoi, the, the capital of Vietnam, when they met in Vietnam a few months back. And people say that that was a failure. Um, I'm not so sure that it was. I, I, you know, Trump knows what he's doing. And, you know, Trump gives him a list. This is the list of things. And it bothered Kim at one point or at that point or however that, that worked out. And then Kim went home. People said, oh, it's a failure. It's all over. Wait a minute. Trump is one of those people who knows what he's doing. And I, you know, I talk about that in the podcast weekly, you know, just, just yesterday, just a, a little bit in the, be in the beginning, in the, the first half, I talked about the need to know your values and, and to know how to generate, to know the, the hard, tough decisions that a lot of people think we need to, you know, kind of back away from, but the decisions that we need to make in order to, um, you know, keep keep the fuel coming. And Trump knows how to, to keep the necessary disruptions moving. Uh, you know, all of us, the concept of necessary disruptions, it's called an engine. You know, it consumes gasoline. You constantly got to feed the thing and pay for stuff. And it makes noise and it's got to be fixed. You know, you call it a necessary disruption. I call it an engine. And, and that's something that we easily forget about if we don't understand what it takes to make stuff work. Trump knows how to make stuff work. And whatever happened in Hanoi, Trump knew it would be okay, knew it would be the right thing. And this, uh, for those who don't know that Trump knows what he's doing, this vindicates Trump in the eyes of those people. Well, maybe, maybe they're, they're blind and they'll never see anything. But uh, as far as that goes, in, in, you know, this is vindicating to Trump in the eyes of some people, not in my eyes, because I know, I, I get him. I know that he knows what he's doing. Um, this really, this really was a very powerful act of friendship with Kim because he was part of this major first. The whole world is celebrating crossing over the Korean border, something that they weren't allowed to do before, pretty much. It wasn't even the South Korean president that was there. It was, it was Trump being willing to, to come over himself. I mean, that's a, that's a bold thing. I mean, you've, you're surrounded by leaders. I mean, if, if Korea were evil, they might attack the president. It, you know, it, like, it, like there's some courage and there's some trust there. So there's a, there's a lot that, that went on. You could think about this and probably come up with more as to w why this is a this is a good nice gesture. But um, the the big thing is this really speaks encouragement and respect and inclusion, involvement, invitation, friendship. You know, Kim wasn't at the G20, but this includes him in the story of the G20 in 2019. This. This brings him in to the fold, kind of. This, this, this opens him, or th this, this welcomes him with open arms, and it includes him. It, it remembers the kid that wasn't invited to the party and has kind of an after party with him. And the after party, as we all know, often happens, turned out to be better than the party. So this is going to have, my, my point in all this, kind of, this is going to have a major impact on Kim and Trump's relationship. And whatever Xi Jinping 
had offered to him, and I mentioned this admittedly in, in the Cadence editorial uh, this week, whatever, whatever Xi Jinping, the president of China, may have offered to Kim, it pales in comparison to what Trump was able to offer here. See, Xi Jinping cannot walk across the debated, disputed border in peace to do something that's never been done before. Xi Jinping can't offer that. And it, 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 so Trump went and offered what nobody can. And that, that's going to be meaningful for Kim. Now, that's also going to upstage a lot of the political stuff going on. I mean, the 2020 election's over. And someone's going to say, no, it's not over. Yes, it's over. If you understand how politics work, if you understand leadership and love and respect and the power game and, and diplomacy, not, not diplomacy isn't about being nice all the time. Diplomacy is about actions that matter, a diplomatic action, not just giving someone a bunch of money, but taking the courageous, bold step that, well, to boldly go where no president has gone before. Um, all right. Yes. Yes. Uh, the president and uh, the uh, the great successor, dear leader, both crossed the border. Beam me up, Scotty. See you tomorrow.